First Kings chapter 18. This chapter is going to be broken down in several parts. Verse 17. Now what's happened is we come to the point where God sends Elijah to Ahab. Ahab and, and Obadiah, a servant, the governor, they're going out looking for grass to try to save the animals. Obadiah runs into Elijah. Elijah says, go tell Ahab, here I am. And Obadiah is scared to death. He's going to think that I'm going to go tell him there is a price on Elijah's head. and we're, They're going to come here and you're going to be gone and I'm going to be dead. And it came to pass when uh, Ahab saw Elijah. Now Elijah, if you see the E-L-I, that's Eli. Eli, Eli, lama sevekti, my God. The jaw, J-A-H, that's Jehovah. Eli, I mean, Elijah's name has God, God. Lord God of God, God of the Lord God. Interesting. And Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? Well, in a sense of a way, yes, but no. Now, we read from James and we read from Jesus Christ that there's uh, three and a half years of famine due to no rain. In chapter 18, verse 1, this is the third year. Elijah has called for a period of no rain by God's authority. But God is not unrighteous that here comes judgment for no reason. And he answered and said, I have not troubled Israel. But thou. Now, as Americans, we don't understand royalty. We don't understand monarchy. We do not have a president that if you were to walk up in his face and cuss him out with every four-letter word you can think of, nothing's going to really happen. Uh, there was one person one time I read, he flipped the finger to the president, and I think they, well, I don't even know what came. But when you're looking at a monarchy where he's got soldiers with swords in a country that, that, that whipping and crime is removing fingers of Asia and all that, you just don't walk up to the king and say, thou art the man. More so of Egypt, where Pharaoh is not only the king, he is the god. And when you look at royalty, which America hates, is when you see royalty, you're supposed to see God sitting on the throne. That person of the authority of the uh, reign is to be a bastard of God, such as the scriptures say he's to be. Romans 13 says he's a minister of God, whether he's evil or good, because Paul and Peter have a most wicked ruler called Nero, almost said Nemo, Nero, and they both write at the same time, that man you're supposed to obey. The religious people, the rulers of the Israelites in the time of Jesus, they are not doing what God has told them, but Jesus said, hey, if they say the law says it, you do it. And Elijah's walking up to a king. He says, it's the problems with you. And kings would have put you down. But the providence and protection of God. But thou art the troubler. I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house. In that ye have forsaken the commandment of the Lord. And thou hast followed Balaam. Now, what you're doing, you're in Israel nor, but you're still under the law. You're still under the covenant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are still under the law of Moses. You have left that. You have disobeyed God. You are not following God. As a result, you're the troubler. I am just passing judgment. I am trying to get your attention. And God does that. Um... Uh, 
The Pharisees were all upset John the Baptist because he's getting all the people showing up at the baptism. And they had to send people out to him. Paul is taking people out of the synagogues and they're meeting in houses. And when the, the Sanhedrin or the Pharisees or the Sadducees attend their services and they look out, there's many people missing from their congregation. That upsets them. And what Israel has done is they have left the temple of God. They have left the worship of God. They are not going to Jerusalem the three times a year that the males should. They have established a religion that copycats God Jehovah. And they have given it over to golden calves, to Baal. Baal has become Jehovah. They got their own religious holidays and added some to, and they've got priests that God does not honor. Now, Baal, let me explain to you Baal. Baal is the God. He's the sun God. He's the almighty war God. He's the God of all the area. And he's under many names. His wife is Asterisk. And you'll see her name come up in Jeremiah. She's the queen of heaven. Well, if you got King Baal and you got Queen uh, Asterisk, well, a husband and wife comes together and they have children. Balaam is plural of Baal. Little Baal's running around. Balaam would be the identity of Christians who become the sons of God, not by sexual intercourse, but by the Holy Spirit, by the faith and trust in the belief of Jesus Christ. What it would be, if you were to look outside, would be the sun. Sunrise service, there's Baal. See him? Good morning, Baal. Good morning, Baal. Baal goes across the sky. He goes away somewhere. Where'd he go? Up comes his wife, the moon. 28, 29 days of a woman. Well, there's a whole bunch of other lights out there now. Where did they come from? Baal and Asterisk. There would be the worship of stars and planets and everything else that's out there. The worship of the devil and his powers. And Elijah, God, God, Jehovah, God, the Lord Jehovah, proclaims to Ahab, you're wrong. It is you and Israel. Now, therefore, send. Now, this is an invitation. And gather to me all Israel and unto Mount Carmel, the prophets of Baal, 450. There's 450 prophets that serve Baal and they're false prophets. They're lying prophets. And the prophets of the groves, there's your groves, that are against God. 400. So there are 850 prophets all together. And these 400 which eat at, there's Jezebel again, Jezebel's table. There's her prophets we've already looked at before in verse 4. She's killing the prophets of God because they're irritating her prophets. God marks the 144,000, if you, if you read before they, they're sent out. There is 144,000 men of God sent out to go to the Jews and preach to them. Well, Kawinky Dinky, anti-Christ-like, sends out an invitation. And that imitation is that men on Satan's side will receive a mark. The mark of the beast. Which would probably almost be identical to the mark that they marked 144,000 with. And then you'll get to the point, well, is that 144,000 or is that a bastard of Satan? Problem is the whole world will receive that mark. Jews will not. Most of the Jews will not. So... The fathers of Ahab are completely wrong. 
The, we've, and we've already seen that Ahab is a type of Antichrist. Elijah, we've already seen, is in the tribulation with Moses. Now run three verses, three, uh, three places. Daniel eleven thirty seven to show you more of we are tribulation passage. Now Daniel and Revelation are great books that people love of prophecy and Antichrist. Well, what about First Kings eighteen? We're reading the same thing, Daniel eleven, verse thirty seven. About the Antichrist. And this will match. What Elijah just told Ahab. It says. Neither shall he. The Antichrist. Regard the God of his fathers. Now stay there. and Let me read to you. And he answered. I have not troubled Israel. But thou and thy father's house. In that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord. And there it is. That's. One of the qualities, that's one of the attributes of the Antichrist. He regard, neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. Notice the capital G. The God of his fathers is Jehovah. He leaves Jehovah. Nor to desire women, nor regard any God. He shall magnify, magnify himself above all, including gods. Now let's go over to... Second Thessalonians chapter 2 about this Antichrist matching Ahab with a little help with, Je with Jezebel. Second Thessalonians 2 3. This is all about the Antichrist. Let no man deceive you in any means, for that day shall not come except the except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin, there's the Antichrist, be revealed the son of perdition, the, the Antichrist, who opposes and ex exalted himself, Daniel, above all that is called God. Listen, there will be no Jesus Christ in the tribulation period. I don't know what God the Jehovah Witnesses worship. There won't be no Jehovah Witness God. There will not be uh, Allah. There will not be a Pope. There will not be whoever the Mormons. There will not be Nevada or whatever they call it. The God of the tribulation period will be the God that sits in the Holy of Holies. Declaring himself God. So when Jesus Christ comes back, there's a name that no one knows. He completely wipes out the name Jesus. Or that is worship and that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God the most holy place the holy of holies will sit the temples coming back when I don't know but it will be there at the three and a half year period just as the desolation of abomination that Jesus and Daniel talked about when that that veil that has been ripped by Jesus is brought open. All the TV cameras. and There he is. Hi, folks. It's me. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you. This, this is Paul talking to the church. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity... <laughs> That's his name, man of sin, mystery of iniquity, does already work in 54 AD. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And I have a little trouble with that. Then shall that capital W wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spear of his mouth, that sword, the second advent. But there's that man of sin. There's the mystery of iniquity. There's the one that says, I am God. Now, one last place, Revelation again, 11. And let's match it with the man that looks like he's Elijah in the tribulation period. To show that second, I mean, excuse me, 1 Kings 18 is a prophecy, a type of tribulation period. Revelation chapter 11. 
Uh, and verse 3. We'll get the context again. Maybe we'll get to know these verses by knowing. By reading and rereading. We're going to see this over and over in the Old Testament. I will give power unto my two witnesses that they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score year, days clothed in sackcloth. Forty-two months. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. We talked about that last week. If any man will hurt them, fire proceed out of their mouth and devour their enemies. That didn't happen in Kings. Though I, I forget it's Elijah or Elijah. There's an army coming, 51 men. But fire come down in heaven, fire beat a man up. <laughs> Next rank. Well, fire be come down. <laughs> Third guy, he's on his knees. <laughs> I know who you are. And devour their enemies, and if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. I guess just burned up. These have power to shut up heaven. It rained not in the days of their prophecy. I wonder who that sounds like. And power over wars to turn them to blood. I wonder who that sounds like. And we read that the other night with the, the third of the trees going. The third, of, I mean... And to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. We talked about that. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottom of the pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Now the type in 1 Kings 18, all types don't go 100%. I'll tell you one reason why. Here comes the Antichrist meeting Elijah, but Moses is not there. Moses is dead. But though first Kings, I mean, yeah, first Kings 18, here comes the Antichrist and here comes Elijah. Elijah's gonna meet the king again face to face, but it's not gonna be Ahab. And he'll run into Mystery Babylon. That is Jezebel. He'll recognize that. In verse 8, and their dead bar uh, well, uh verse 7, make war against them and shall overkill them. Overtake, overcome them, and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of that great city, which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt, said that the other day, where also the Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their bodies to be put in the grave. And they that dwell on the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry. And shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwell in the earth. All right, let's go back to First Kings eighteen. Art thou the one that troubleth Israel? Wait a minute. You mean to tell me that all that's happened so far in Revelation eleven is because of Elijah? Uh-uh. It's because of the sins of the Antichrist. It's because the people are falling for the Antichrist. It ain't Elijah. Elijah sent to try to get as many more Jews he can. Him and Moses. If there's any two people in the world that if outside 144,000 that the Jews should know is they should know Moses and Elijah. Now, how do you know that? Well, let me ask you a question. There are three men on the hill. They're sleeping one night. They had a big dinner. They've been in the garden. They, they were sleeping and all that. Jesus is praying for three hours, it looks like. At least an hour. And they get on that mountain. And Jesus says, listen. Pay attention. They fall asleep. Peter wakes up, rubs his eyes. He says, Lord, it is great that we be here. Shall we build a tabernacle for you, for Moses, and for a how did Peter know that those was Moses and Elijah? They were not wearing name tags that said, hello, I'm Moses. Hello, I'm Elijah. It would be it would be clearly stated for the fact is, like Peter knew Moses and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration, the fact is that when Moses and Elijah show up in the tribulation, if they studied the, the Torah, if they studied the prophets, there they are, like Peter. And is he that troubled Israel? We read that in Revelation 11. Oh, they tormented us. Well, you think it's torment? 
Wait till you fall into hell. All uh, Elijah and Moses did is cut off the water supply. That's all they've done. Now therefore send, verse 19, and gather me all unto the Mount Carmel, the prophets of Baal. So Baal has prophets as God has prophets. See the imitation? God's got prophets, so do I. 450 and the prophets of the groves 400 well we've read that Obadiah has taken a hundred and hit him by fifties well who's got the big church and first Kings 16 18 Jezebel's got the big congregational church she's got the more people and they sit at her table what and the prophets of the groves 400, so 400 extra, 850 total prophets in two groups. Remember, Ahab had Jeroboam's golden calf religion, and then Honeybell brought her religion of her father and her people, Baal, into the kingdom of Israel. There are prophets again for. The golden cows, there are prophets for Baal. They both come together, two groups. You got two major denominations of Satan in the world today. It's the Catholic and it's the Protestants. Protestants are not Baptists. They're just Catholics who clean up and change the vocabulary. That's all they are. There's one man I know in the ministry, I have great respect for him, but he always said we are Protestants and we are not. You were wrong on that. I'm sorry. You will have to give a call to God. Two group. Which eat at Jezebel's table. That was a big table. I don't mean having all 400. I don't think she would have 400 at the same time. But imagine if she did. Imagine she had a hundred four different times a day breakfast noon lunch. she guided these people at her table Now let me ask you a question. Do you know somewhere in Christ's church where there is a table? Not the Lord's Supper Where we gather with the body and bread of Jesus that is figurative that is not the real body of Jesus. It's a cracker without leaven. And it's a grape juice. The purest thing that God says closest to the blood of Jesus Christ. The new wine. Well, what's, what's Jezebel doing with her table? She's having Revelation 12. She's going to have literal Jewish bodies and Jewish blood. The ones that were, that were beheaded under the altar. Revelation what altar? The one at the temple. They're going to come to the temple with their sacrifice and they're going to, uh, and before they even get a word out, they're going to lose their neck if they don't run. And Jesus said at that moment, if you're on top of the house, Peter, where was Peter when he had his Gentile? He was on top of the house. He was hungry. You better get going. If you're two women at the mill, I mean, no, that's the wrong one. Excuse me. If you're in the field, don't go back to your house to get your clothes. Get moving. It's got to be worldwide news that the fact is, if you're out in the field doing work, and you hear that what just happened in the Holy of Holies, it's going to be big world, world night, worldwide news. And Elijah's going to come up. And he's going to pick a. He's going to pick up a counterpart, and the counterpart is working with oxen. But Elijah allows him to go back and say goodbye to his father. And Jesus said, "Hey, the man that leaves his plow is not worthy of the kingdom of heaven." Again, that's all tribulation passage. And Elijah came unto all the people, verse twenty-one, and said, "How long?" Halt. That's the first time that word shows up, and I had to check. Is that the right word? You know what halt means? It means you're leaning on a, a cane. You're not walking right. You're limping. You're having a problem walking. 
And I was thinking it has to be a how long shout. I thought they dropped the eight, the S. But it's correct. How long halt? You guys are walking with a limp. You don't have a straight don't walk. Man, look at Elijah attacking him. You all not preach like that. You're turning the people away. I'm preaching what the Bible says. Between two opinions, and that's the only place opinions show up in the Bible. And what are the opinions of, now opinions plural, I'm not talking about opinion, I didn't look that one up, but the two opinions, what is the reference in the first time that shows up in the Bible? It's either God or Baal. There's no other. So what is God? God is Jehovah. The God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. The God that's the creator. Who's the gods? Baal. Who's that? That's Satan. Satan will disguise himself in any name or form that you will receive him as. If the Lord be God, and he is, I believe that, follow him. Great, I will. I was under Baal one day, but I came to God. But if Baal... Then follow him. All right, look, look at the option Elijah's leaving here. Hey, if God is God, all right. If Baal's God, all right. And the people answered him not a word. <laughs> it's like Jesus. When Jesus put forth a question, uh, <laughs> you realize when every time someone asked Jesus a question, he had an answer, and it usually was not what they were expecting. And when Jesus asked them a question, uh, 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 I don't know, can't answer you. Even if Jesus said, well, I'm not going to answer you because you can't answer my question. That's an answer. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. Now this is Elijah's problem. He's got self-pity. And this is going to be his downfall. Look at chapter 18 we're in. And verse number 18.4. For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah took a hundred prophets. You're not the only one, Elijah. There are a hundred men, fifty in two caves. That love the Lord and do right. And you were told that in verse number. Oh, where is he talking about? Obadiah tells him. Verse 13. 18, 13. Was it not told my Lord that I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? That's all he heard. All the prophets are dead. Now how I hid a hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifties. Elijah didn't hear that. She slew the prophets. I'm the only one that's left. And he gets in this problem. Chapter 19, verse 10. Chapter 19, verse 10. And this will be down, his downfall. There's going to be 144,000 prophets in the tribulation. In verse 10, he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken their thy covenant, they have thrown down thy altars, they have slain thy prophets, Jezebel did, with the sword, and I, even I, am only left. Well, see, see, that's the problem he has. Verse 14, 1914. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant. They have thrown down thy altars. They have and slain thy prophets with the sword. They have and I, even I, only am left. See, he's got that problem. Verse 18. 1918. This is God speaking. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel. Israel. Northern Israel. Where Baal and where... Uh, uh, the golden calf religion. There are 
7,000 that are going down to Jerusalem like they're supposed to. There are 7,000 that are obeying. They may be in Israel, maybe trying to get people right. I don't know. But there are 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal. It tells you what they're what the other people are doing. They are wholly worshiping Baal by getting on their knees. And every mouth which has not kissed him, Baal. Listen, folks, there's only one religious leader that goes around the world and they kiss his ring or his feet, and that's the Pope. And God said, the number, what was the number again? 7,000? Uh, 7,000. Elijah, there are 7,000 that God has counted. You're not the only one. This will be Elijah's downfall. Back to 1 Kings 18, 22. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450. So, the first, 450 prophets. That's Baal's prophets. Jezebel has her own 400 of the groves. It's like they worship her. Baal's her God. Let them therefore give us two bullocks. Let me ask you a question. How many golden calves were there? Two of them. Hey, look what he just did. He said, let's have two bullocks. Let's have two cows. You guys are the two God, two cows God. Bring two of them. And let them choose one bullock for themselves. All right, here's two bullocks. You prophets of Baal, pick yourself a bullock. Anyone, anyone. And cut it in pieces. You got to kill it. And then you got to divide the meat. And lay it on the wood. Put the wood down for an altar. We're going to have a sacrifice, boys. The God that answers by fire. And put no fire under. And I will dress the other bullock and lay it on the wood and put no fire under. Now, I learned this from a remarkable person who I respect much. You know why he said put no fire under it? You ever see magic? You ever see where somebody is, and what they would do was, this was a common event in the old days. I don't know how far it goes back. I don't know how far it's to, maybe today. And what they would do is they would do, put something on for a sacrifice. Put something up and say, what we're going to do is we're going to call down fire from the gods. All right? But the trickery, the thing is that what they would do was they would put a little lit coal under their sacrifice when nobody was looking. And so what would happen within time, they would do incantations and whatever needed to be done. And eventually, given time, that little coal would spark up and then there would be a fire. And ta-da! God answered by trickery and put no fire under it. Do you believe that's also in the tribulation period? Revelation 13, 13. But this won't be trickery. This is the power of Satan. And there's one other verse we'll have to go to. Verse uh, chapter 13, 13. Is that a good number? 13, 13. And he, that's the Antichrist, does great wonders. And he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. I'll tell you what, Elijah. I'll match that battle on, on Carmel. Poof, there it is. Job 1. Job chapter 1. 
It's all there. Except for my Job. Where you go? There he is. Job chapter 1, verse 16. Now, you need to read Job chapter 1 because Satan goes up to God. God says, isn't Job a wonderful person? Verbatim, I'm saying. And Satan says, yeah, I'll tell you what. You let me at him. And I'll show you how much he loves you. And God says, go ahead, but don't touch him. So in Job chapter 1, under the power of Satan, verse 16, while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, the fire of God, he has no idea where it came from. He's thinking the Holy Father, God, Almighty Jehovah. It's the wrong cap. It's the wrong G. The fire of God is fallen from heaven and has burnt up the sheep. Of all animals to burn up, he burns up the sheep. Why not the cows? Go back to Elijah. <laughs> There's the cows. Go back to 1 Kings 18. They're not going to be able to do what Elijah's going to do. But Satan knows the scripture. He said, well, I'll tell you why. In case somebody in the tribulation period hears Stiley preach about the tribulation period in 1 Kings 18 and say, my prophets couldn't do that. Well, maybe my prophets can't do that. You watch me do it. <clears throat> There's the fire. How's that? Jews require a son. Satan's a great imitator. No marvel, Satan himself transforms an angel of light. No marvel of his ministers also appears the ministers of righteousness. He's the great phony. Verse 24, and we'll close on 24. And call on the name of your gods. Baal, Balaam, Ashtoreth, Hercules, Zeus, Murdoch. You know, that's forbidden in the law what he just told them to do. But they're not obeying the law either. The, the law says specifically not even to make the mention of the names. Of, but they ain't following the law. He knows that. And isn't it funny that God is so great that he gave us tonight, John chapter 17, the Lord's Prayer about the world hating us. And the world hates us by our street ministry. That was comforting to me. I needed that. And this, in fact, is I preach today about the name of Jesus. There was no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. And here we talk about, go ahead, call on the name of your gods. And I preach that all morning. You call on the names of your religion. They ain't going to depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Call on the name of your gods. And I will call on the name of the Lord. Do you remember what Elijah's name means? <laughs> Well, like I said, we're going to stop here. But it's remarkable. In verse 37 of the chapter, we'll go to verse 37. Hear me, O Lord. Heal me. I mean, excuse me, hear me. Elijah's name is the Lord. Now, wouldn't it be interesting if he were to say, Eli! Hear me, Eli. Ever know what else that was said? Jesus on the cross. We're on a mount. And there's more people against God and one man who's for God. You know somewhere else where there's one man for God and everybody was against? You can't even say John. John did not believe in the upper room with the disciples that he heard the word that Jesus has risen from the grave. Boy, we're seeing the power of Jesus here. When it comes to people at the great white throne judgment, Allah, Mary, Baloni, Popey, my preacher, the water, whatever the name of their gods was. My name, my God. Because I will be sealed with the name of God one day. In my glorified body. 
One name above all names. Jesus Christ. Because that's interesting. Call upon the name of your gods. I will call upon the name of the Lord. Again, we got to go to Revelation 19. Revelation 19. How many times are we going to Revelation? It's there. Revelation 19. I think it's 19. Before 20. Revelation 19, verse 11. I saw the heavens open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called. Now here's what he's called. To me, faithful and true. That's what I know Jesus is. Faithful and true. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And in righteousness does he judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Right, let's go back to over here, 1 Kings 18. They don't know the name of God. All they know, the name of God's. But every time they mention, if they were to say Elijah, they're saying God. Lord God, God, the Lord God, the Jehovah. And they don't even know it. And this, and the God that answers by fire. You see what Satan's going to do in the, in the tribulation period? The God that answers by fire. Revelation 13, 13. Well, going to by that verse, what Elijah just said. And 1 Kings 18, 24. The God that answers by fire. Revelation 13, 13. Who's the God? Job chapter 1. Who's the God? And Satan can give you chapter and verse. Did he not give Jesus chapter? Well, it wouldn't have been chapter and verses, but did not Satan quote the scriptures? Hey, guys, you know what Elijah said? The man that I killed? Do you know what Elijah said? I'll tell you what Elijah said. He said, the God that will answer by fire, let him be God. Watch this, people. There it is. Now, who's the God? Who's the God? He's the Antichrist. He did it in Job. The servants of Job thought it was God, capital G. How's that? Let him be God. It was capital G in, in Job chapter 1. And all the people who answered said, it is well spoken. All right, let's do it. And we're going to close right there. That's a great time to close. We'll pick up the battle. Next.